Hi, welcome to Living Life. Uh, my name is Mike, and I pray that the Word of God would enrich your life and that you would grow as you understand and know Him more. Uh, you know, throughout my years, I never thought or would have imagined that I would actually go to a K-pop concert, uh, never in my wildest dreams. Um, but my oldest daughter, she is a big fan, and she always talks about you know, certain singers and performers, and she would sing their songs. And you know, it just so happened that one of our church members uh, knew about this and gave us tickets to go watch one of my daughter's favorite groups in concert. And even though I didn't know what they were singing or what was going on, but one of the things that impressed me most while I was watching this concert was their dancing. And what I noticed was uh, how well they were synchronized with each other and with the rest of the group. And so you can tell that they put a lot of effort, a lot of sacrifice and time uh, to make sure that uh, everything was in sync. Every movement, every word, uh, everything you can see and tell, it's almost as if they were one, uh, as if they were being pulled by strings with one person doing all the work. And as we look into this passage, we'll see how God and the Son Jesus are one and they're in sync with each other. John chapter 5, verses 19 through 29. Jesus gave them this answer. Very truly, I tell you, the Son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his Father doing, because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all he does. Yes, and he will show him even greater works than these, so that you will be amazed. For just as a father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the son gives life to whom he is pleased to give it. Moreover, the father judges no one, but has entrusted all judgment to the son, that all may honor the son just as they honor the father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Very truly, I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged but has crossed over from death to life. Very truly, I tell you, a time is coming and has now come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. And he has given him authority to judge, because he is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed at this, for a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done what is good will rise to live, and those who have done what is evil will rise to be condemned. And so as we look here in chapter 5 of the book of John, uh, we see and we find ourselves uh, looking at the relationship between the Father and the Son. And one of the things that Jesus makes clear in this passage, uh, in verses 19 to 20, is that uh, the Father and the Son, they are one. And uh, this is actually a very beautiful picture when you think about it, that they are uh, joined together, that they have this intimate and very close bond. Uh, you know, growing up, I always envied my friends when I saw that they had such a close relationship with their dads. And so their father would take them to play sports or go watch movies together, hang out. And, you know, the fathers would give them advice. And I would hear that uh, from their children. And they would say, oh, my dad told me this. And so when I saw that, I always wanted to have that kind of relationship with my own father. And so we see here uh, the God the Father and Jesus the Son are working in harmony and working as one. And so we see the bond that they have to get together as they are latched on to one another. And Jesus is explaining to the people the nature of his relationship with God. And so he's telling them and he's explaining that he can do nothing other than what he sees the Father doing. And so he cannot work independently from God the Father. No matter how hard he tries, 
He cannot do things. He cannot think. He cannot speak or do anything that is apart from God himself. And so this is very important for us to realize that uh, Jesus was not someone who uh, thought by himself. He was not a person that uh, walked and did things by himself. But rather, this is why we saw um, how much he prayed and how much he sought after God because he heard from him and he would do directly as he was told. Uh, and so we see here that the reason being uh, he, that this is being described is to show that Jesus submitted to the Father's will. Uh, so this submission comes by choice. Uh, it's not done by coercion. It's not forced upon. And he is not inferior to the Father, but he is equal. And so we see here that they see eye to eye and that he also operates on the same level. And we also see that the Father loves his Son. And, and we know that he loves him dearly. He would do anything and he would go to the ends for his own son. And so the relationship between these two is based on love, nothing else, not uh, due to status, uh, not because one is a son and one is the father, but rather that they love each other. Uh, so there is no master, slave, employer, employee uh, kind of relationship, but they are united in love. Uh, and then as we move on in this passage, we also see the authority of the Son. So Jesus makes it clear that all his power, all his strength is coming from up above, from God. And so God is the source of life, the source of everything that he does and that comes out of him. And so he alone has the power to give life uh, and to take someone out of death. And so the authority was given uh, to this son. And so God gave Jesus the, also the power of judgment. And so it's amazing to see, you know, when you look throughout the Gospels, uh, you see Jesus when he looked at someone and he can automatically tell what they were thinking. And this is uh, the reason why he had this ability was because he had the power of judgment. And so he can look at a person and understand immediately what's going on in their, in their lives and in their thought process. Uh, so, for instance, when Jesus looked at the rich young ruler, uh, he knew immediately what he was thinking. And he was saddened um, that he did not choose Christ over his wealth. Uh, when he saw Simon Peter, uh, he was able to see right through him and how he would uh, deny him three times. Uh, and so whenever he looked at these people, they were not looks of anger, but I believe that they were looks of love. And so he knew and he understands what every person was going through. And when they rejected him, uh, he was very saddened by it. And so Jesus gives judgment upon the people and that they will honor him as they honor the Father. And so when a person fails to honor God, uh, they fail to honor Jesus. And uh, lastly, we see there that there is life through uh, the Son. And so Jesus ex explains that those who hear his words and believe in Jesus, that they will have everlasting life. Uh, one of the things that stood out about this passage is that the word uh, marvel here that appears and so in verse 20, it says that they will marvel at the relationship between the Father and the Son. And I hope and pray that in your relationship, in your walk with God, that you will take time to marvel at God, that you will marvel at Christ and what He has done for you. And this does not come at a small cost, but it was done uh, with a heart of love. And, and so He did this for our salvation. And so as we look and as we ponder, may we learn to have an all-filled faith for what God has done for each and every one of our lives. And so as we see here the relationship uh, between the Father and the Son, um, we know that God has given all authority, and it's uh, so encouraging to see and so beautiful to see this picture of Jesus uh, working side by side with God the Father. 
and that everything that's being said is being carried out faithfully through His Son. And so may that be a reminder to us that as we live our lives here on earth, as we are called to live out in faith, let us learn to be sensitive. Let's listen to the words of the Father and the, and the words of the Son, and that we too can be found faithful in everything that we do, that we will walk uh, with, with Him and not trying to go in front of Him or behind Him, but rather that He walks with us and He's holding our hands. And so let's be grateful for that and lift that up in prayer. Uh, let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the image. Uh, we thank you, Lord, that there is nothing that Jesus did uh, apart from God. And so may that be our words as well, that, Father, uh, apart from you, we can do nothing. And so we pray that you empower us, strengthen us, uh, help us, O oh God, and be, remind us, uh, Lord, to walk in step with you. And so, Lord, wherever you go, uh, may we follow, and may we go to the ends of the earth as you have told us to. Uh, we thank you, God, for our time, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This program is produced by the listeners of the audience.